What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Ian Harris, President and CEO of Libero Copper. How are you doing today, Ian? Wonderful, wonderful. Glad for the uh, invite. Glad to be here. Yeah, for sure. It's exciting. Can you start by giving us a brief introduction to Libero Copper and telling us more about the company? You're joining us here from Medellin, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. And I, and I arrived this morning from, from Argentina, so lots going on with the company. It's, it's very exciting times. Uh, but in general, um, we have, we're have we focused on copper porphyries because they have the potential to become future mines due to the supply and demand gap that's expected in copper. So focusing on assets that have the potential to become future mines. Uh, we have significant projects in British Columbia, Big Red, uh, in Colombia, where I am today, Mocoa, and Esperanza in, in Argentina. Uh, and I think uh, kind of a, a key um, component of the company is not only have a lot of experience looking at the exploration side and, and taking regional approaches to advancing projects, but also have that component of uh, engineering and project development with lots of experience getting some of the most significant projects in the world uh, into construction and future production. Yeah, no, I think that's what makes you guys unique. So Libero Copper has four unique projects with exposure to Canada, Colombia, and Argentina, like you said. So can you tell us more about your projects and why it's so important to have diversity in the market? Yeah, really, it was a strategy where we saw where copper was going and really saw the, the opportunity to start consolidating um, projects with some key criteria, right? 90% of the world's production comes from open pit copper porphyry mines, which means it has a kind of a size and scale minimum. You need to have at least 200 million tons plus. It needs to be close to surface, disseminated, good strip ratios. And because these projects actually take a significant amount of time to get down that development pipeline, jurisdiction is key. Uh, so we're using that criteria, we're really happy with the portfolio that we picked up. The company acquired uh, Macoa in 2018, followed by Big Red, and made a, dis a porphyry discovery in 2020. Uh, in January 2001, acquired Esperanza. And I think we really, uh, our goal is always to stay in front. We feel that obviously a bubble is, or a, a bubble probably a bad word, but you know, there's an expectation growing mm -hmm. in, the, in the copper market, and we would like to be a way in front uh, to make sure that our projects are always the most advanced and, and be at the forefront when these things really, when the wake up call really happens, right? When we start to really start see a significant spread uh, and this is supply and demand in copper. No, that's great to hear. So can you give us some updates when it comes to your ongoing drilling? Yeah, so um, uh, Big Red, we're coming up soon to a new, uh, campaign, you know, it's a seasonal uh, season drilling program up at Big Red. Um, at Esperanza, we're working on, and the reason I just came back from Argentina, we had a meeting with the Minister of uh, Mines of uh, San Juan to talk about getting that project restarted. A critical part just happened with Jose Maria getting their EI approved for construction, which was with a significant focus uh, of, the, uh, of the, uh, the department for this time period. But also the big news is that uh, Makoa, uh, we have started drilling. We started drilling in, in March of, of this year, have finished the first hole, uh, which we decided to extend. It passed over 1,200 meters, um, and we got the first 450 meters in uh, and released it immediately. Um, it, was, it was a tough decision, but honestly, it's such a significant result. Uh, even though it's partially decided things must get out. This is uh, significant news. Uh, market should see it um, because the indications are that, you know, our, our goal our goal from the beginning was this is a project that hasn't been drilled in 10 years. We know the quality of the project, but we really think um, that market really didn't understand or, or wasn't visible enough. And it seems drill results really are, are what gets everybody attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really like the, how the first 450 meters are playing out. I'm sure you guys are excited for the rest of that as well. So, you know, what are some of the major catalysts investors should be looking out for in the near term? You know, I think that the catalyst uh, part of it already happened on, on Tuesday, which was just getting, uh, you know, the recognition mm -hmm. uh, of the McCall project to market. Um, really, we've spent a lot of time doing the base work to get these projects advanced. Uh, and now is the time to make sure that everybody starts seeing it. So, 
we expect uh, within uh, the next week or two to have the remaining components of that entire hole complete. Um, you know, we're, we, we've given specific instructions when the entire hole is done, send us the entire results together, right? So uh, we kind of get, get it to the market as soon as we have it. Um, and, uh, you know, if QAQC uh, passes, exactly, you know, there's obviously a, a lot of work that's to be done internally really quick. Uh, we expect that those results to come out. Uh, the other, another big Kylos at Makoa is we flew uh, geophysics back in November, uh, October, November of last year. Uh, and that interpretation is now being done. A big, a big part of our new story is uh, Matt Wonder is our new VP of exploration. He's an absolute amazing expert in intrusive uh, type deposits, including porphyries. He's bringing so much to the table, a really disciplined approach the way, and, and the timing is perfect. Now that all these projects are kind of getting uh, either advancing or are going to be advancing soon, getting that discipline around our programs uh, and really trying to see the big picture. Uh, so we have a lot, I think, a lot going on and a lot coming out in the in the near term, and then obviously a potential white swan um, working on on the restart of uh, Esperanza in in Argentina. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting time for you guys. I'm excited to cover it. So I always love to ask this, you know, your focus on copper. So as copper becomes more and more important with electric vehicles and other highly important industries, how do you feel about the price going forward. I know you're not going to give any predictions, but how are, how are your thoughts on the market? Yeah, unfortunately, you're talking to the mining engineer CEO. So <laughs> my focus is more on, I know you're going to need it. Let me make yeah. sure that we are having the most advanced projects, right? So it's really tough to predict, but in simplest terms, right? The prediction, I've seen conservative models that talk about a 4 million ton uh, a deficit between supply and demand and by 2030, that's eight years from now, and yeah. I've seen up to 8 million tons. And to put it into perspective, the 10 largest mines in the world produce about 6 million tons. So we have eight years to um, put into production the equivalent of the 10 largest mines in the world. And obviously, we know that that is a, a next to an impossible task. Um, so when does market realize that? When does the, the, the wake up call happen? I feel like, you know, you've heard the, the boiling frog uh, theory, right? Mm -hmm. The temperature is just going up slowly. Um, you know, you see some really interesting things happening in, in inventories, but you know, that, that really, that as things start really opening up, it's going to take a year or two, but it is, is there going to be forward thinking in the market or is it going to be a reactionary thing? So again, uh, we just look at it, maintain the projects, keeping them and advancing them as quickly as possible, not just from an exploration resource component, but also the engineering component, the environmental, social, uh, political, uh, metallurgical, uh, geotechnical, all the other components to continue to advance uh, and de-risk our projects uh, so that when the wake-up call happens, um, that, that we're, we're advanced. I mean, to be fair, the, one of the major issues is that you have the major consumers have uh, contracts that go out two or three years for their supply. Mines take over 10 years to get into production. And so there's just, there's this, this gap uh, mm -hmm. of, 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 of priorities, right? So, you know, as a mining company, we have a vision of 10 to 20 years, but some of the major consumers have very short term vision. So I think it's going to, it's going to happen, but I don't know when. Definitely. So where's the best place for investors to find out more information about the company? Um, so uh, directly at our website, which is uh, liberocopper.com. We also have a heavy presence, obviously, in social media and LinkedIn and, and, and et cetera, but directly from our website at liberocopper.com. And I think it would be, uh, you know, we do have to, to, to point out, because um, you did ask about some of these significant catalysts and why yesterday mm. was, you know, in that first 450 meters, uh, we put out 251 meters at a 1.13 equivalent copper. Um, mm. That is also at a $3 copper price and a $10 molly price. You know, we know copper is about 450 and molly is almost $20 today. Um, they're very significant results that, you know, are significant game changers. And I think bringing a lot of attention to say, wow, this is a serious uh, quality project. Um, in, in, in Colombia. 
Definitely, Ian. Well, thank you so much for all that information. Uh, sounds like you guys have a lot going on and a lot more exciting news on the way. So best of luck with everything. Thanks for having me on here. I appreciate it. If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your third due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you.